There are a lot of pathways one might take to start making your own beer. You could go out and buy yourself a nice brewer system, have all the right tools and equipment, get yourself some good instruction, and you'll probably do pretty well for yourself. Or you could buy yourself a little countertop beer making kit, which are simple, easy, and quite a bit of fun. Though when I started about 20 years ago, it was actually pretty rough, so however you do it, probably don't do it like I did. I eventually made some beer, but not before making a lot of mistakes. When I was getting started with brewing, my very first mistake was that I went out and started buying things without doing any research. For example, YouTube, at that time, it wasn't even a thing. Hundreds of thousands of hours of videos, just like this one, accessible instantaneously with the click of a button, didn't exist yet. What happened was, I was at a little green grocery store in the town I lived in, and I saw a book called the new complete joy of homebrewing. This exact book right here. And right above it was a can of malt extract. So I bought the book and I bought the extract and I went home. If you know anything about how beer is made, you've probably already figured out that at this point I didn't have enough stuff. I needed more brewing equipment. I needed hops, I needed yeast, I needed a fermenter. I needed bottles or a keg. I did have that can of malt extract, but at that point it was more or less a paperweight I also had this book that I could learn from, but once I figured all this out, I more or less became disinterested and shelved my aspirations to brew beer for the next half decade. Though you gotta start somewhere, and it's not really about where you start, it's where you finish. Because fast forward to today, and I now own a hungry supply company, which is kind of funny considering how it all began. So I carried that can of malt extract and this book around with me from house to house for the next five or six years before I eventually got the urge to brew again. And what I did was I skimmed through the book and then I went out and I bought all the wrong stuff. For example, I bought this here canning pot, um, which was inexpensive, but it's really thin. And that means it's bad for brewing because it's really easy to scorch malt sugar to the bottom of the pot. That ruins your beer and makes a huge mess that's difficult to clean out of the pot. It's also not good for anything other than, I don't know, maybe making pickles, which is cool. It's just not what I was trying to do. I've had this pot for literally almost 20 years and I've used it to brew beer approximately two times. A much better option is an actual brew kettle, such as this one. Um, it has a thick bottom, meaning if you were to brew beer on a stove top, you have much less of a risk of scorching the wort on this. It has multiple ports, which mean that you could upgrade it, for example, from this starter system to our full turnkey system, which includes a built-in heating element, a controller, which will allow you to dial in temperature, a pump, a chiller, a hot basket, hoses, basically, everything you would need to brew any style of beer that you want that you can upgrade to with a click of a button. I also made a homemade immersion chiller pretty much exactly like this one. Um, the only problem with this though is that it's kind of awkward to use, it's difficult to sanitize properly, and it doesn't work very well, which is why I leave it in here and I don't use it. What I use now and what works a lot better than an immersion chiller is a plate chiller. Uh, this thing is super compact, it's super efficient, it's easy to clean and sanitize, it's just better all around. We also carry this, which is a counterflow chiller. Um, this has its place as well. Both of these options are gonna be better than an immersion chiller. And one of the coolest parts about these is that they click straight into our brewing system. One of the last things I bought was a glass carboy. Uh, they look really cool, but they're almost impossible to properly clean, and the only people who still use these are folks who bought them about 20 years ago and haven't upgraded. If you like living on the edge, though, these are for you. They're really slippery when they're wet, and they weigh about 40 pounds when completely full. A number of people have dropped these and sliced their hands in the process. For these reasons, I recommend that you do not buy a glass carboy. In fact, I keep mine down here in the crawl space to avoid any urge I might have to ferment something in it. A much better option here would be a food safe bucket. They're affordable, the entire top comes off so you can clean and sanitize them easily, and they're virtually indestructible. Another option would be a stainless steel fermenter such as this one. The top also comes off of this. Stainless steel is the preferred material for commercial fermenters, and this is also an actual keg so you could serve out of it as well. So the point here is this. Try to not just cobble a bunch of random stuff together. Don't buy items that are designed for caning pickles to brew beer with, uh, and think ahead a little bit. As your brewing abilities progress, you're going to want to add more equipment, and if you get stuff right out of the gate that's designed 
to be upgraded, then you're going to be able to do so easily and without any guesswork. The third mistake I made was that I started way too big given the crappy equipment that I had. Bring five gallons of beer at a time on this setup was really not enjoyable. And because of this, I stopped brewing again after making only a couple batches for another five years. I didn't start brewing again until 2013 and I did so with my good friend Emmett who introduced me to a new style of brewing called Brew in a Bag. It's a method that allows you to brew all grain beer just like professionals do but in a single kettle with the help of a nylon bag or a stainless steel basket such as this one. I was blown away by how easy it was to brew all grain beer on Emmett's system and it was at this point that Clawhammer's brewing system was born. Anyway, what happened to me is one of the really unfortunate things about all of the new to brewing beer making kits that exist right now. The process isn't really going to be enjoyable given the volume of beer they're designed to make, which is like five gallons plus. At the end of the day, they still just consist of a lot of the same stuff that I started brewing with. The most unfortunate thing though, is that they're designed to do one thing and one thing only, which is to brew extract beer and nothing more. If you're not familiar, extract beer is made with either liquid or dry malt extract such as this. Extract recipes and ingredients have gotten a lot better, but in my opinion, you're not going to be winning any awards and you're certainly not going to want to be brewing multiple five gallon batches of it. You'll likely decide to move on to all grain brewing, which is where you brew beer using actual grain almost immediately. That is, if you decide to move on at all, given how unenjoyable the process is probably going to be brewing beer at the scale you did on the equipment that you used. But if you do move on, what you're probably going to have to do is take the equipment you just bought and toss it out in your shed or put it under your crawl space because if it was made for just extract batches, you're not gonna be able to use it for all grain beer. And then I guess maybe in 20 years from now, you'll make a video like this one. That is, unless you decide to start with the equipment that's designed to begin with the extract, then expand into all grain. Another option for extract brewing is to get equipment that's only made for that, but is done so on a very, very small scale. I'm talking like one gallon. This is designed to make about a 12 pack of beer. It's super manageable and it's actually quite fun. It's a great way to experiment, get your feet wet with brewing without dropping a lot of coin on something that you're not gonna be able to upgrade and it's also going to make way too much beer for what you're brewing. I guess my number one piece of advice would be this. Don't be like me, don't make the same mistakes that I made. If you're gonna start with extract beer, start on a very small scale, only make a gallon of beer or a 12 pack at a time. Doing it that way is gonna be enjoyable and it's gonna make it more likely that you're going to want to brew again. And if you think you are interested in making beer to the extent that you are going to want to progress to all grain brewing at some point, then do yourself a favor and get yourself a stainless steel kettle that can be easily upgraded into a standalone turnkey all grain brewing system. You'll be able to start with extract, learn some lessons, and then move on to making really good all grain beer in the same system. And you know what? It would mean a whole lot to me if you could hit the old like button at the bottom of this video if you found any of this information useful and make sure to check out our website for brewing systems and beer making kits. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.